Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to start talking about systems of equations. Now, let's first define what a system is. If we know what a simple equation is. An equation would be like, in this first example, the y equals the 1 half x plus 4. That's a simple equation. But as soon as we combine two equations, or write them like this, one on top of the other, we call this a system of equations, meaning we're going to look for a common solution for both of these equations. That is our goal. Now, to get to that goal, there's a few different methods that we could use uh, to find that answer. Uh, the first method is what we're going to be looking at today, and that's using graphing. Now, graphing is probably the least preferred method because it's not going to be as accurate. There's going to be a lot of times where we may be uh, needing to estimate our solution. But it's a good method because it gives us a visual to see what's going on. So we can kind of see the big picture, and it's a nice way to introduce the topic of how to solve a system. So we understand that we're looking for a coordinate. We're looking for a value for x and y. Now, in the future lessons, we're going to learn about um, how to solve a system using substitution and how to use elimination. And each of those have their advantages and disadvantages as well. Uh, but let's start by looking at how to solve a system of equations using graphing. Again, our goal here is not just to graph. That's not what this lesson is about. It's about how to solve, how to find what they have in common by using the method of graphing. So for this first one, we're going to start, since it's in slope-intercept form, we're going, to start, we're going to start by graphing our y-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4. Our y-intercept is 4. Our slope is negative 1 half, meaning I go down 1 to the right 2. Now, I know that you only need two points to make a line, but the idea here is we want to be as, we want as accurate as possible. So I'm going to come up with other points by continuing my slope, a negative 1 over 2. So down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. Now to go backwards, you saw what I did. We do the complete opposite. We go up. We don't go to the up and to the right 2. We go out to the up and to the left 2, up and to the left 2. So to go backwards, you do the complete opposite of what you do to the right. Okay, so that's our first one. Our second one is going to have a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of 3, 4. So I go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and to the right 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now even though I've just found where they intersect at, Again, showing my work is the graphing. So I still need to graph that line. And again, our solution is where they intersect at. So our solution is the point 4, 2. And we want to write this as a coordinate. Or you could say x equals 4 and y equals 2. Now you can always check your answers. So don't come to me saying, well, I didn't know if I was doing it right. Because the way that we check our answers, we plug 4 in for x, and we should get 2 as our answer for y. 1 half of 4 is 2, so negative 1 half of 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4, sure enough, gives me 2. Now I should get 2 here as well. 3 fourths of 4 is 3, and sure enough, 3 minus 1 gives me 2. So it checks, so it works out that 4, 2 is my common solution. Let's go to the next one. The next one has a y-intercept of 3. It has a slope of, well, you might look at this and say, well, it doesn't have a slope because there's no number. Well, remember, x is just... 1x. So this means that I have a slope of 1, which is the same as 1 over 1. So I go up 1 to the right 1, up right to the white right 1. Now if I want to go backwards, I would go down 1 and to the left 1, down 1 to the left 1. So again, to go backwards, we do the complete opposite. So if going forwards, we were going up 1 to the right 1. To go backwards, I go down 1 to the left 1. So now I have, whoops, got off track there a little bit. But now I have my full graph for that line. So now for my other line, I'm going to have a y-intercept of negative 1. So I'm going to go, and my slope here again is a negative 1 this time, so I'm going to go down 1 to the right 1. If your slope is negative, you go down. If your slope is positive, we go up. We always go to the right. But if we want to go backwards, if we want to find some previous points, that's when we go to the left. So now I go up 1, we do the opposite. Instead of going down 1 to the right 1, I go up 1 to the left 1, up 1 to the left 1, and so on. So now I have my line, and I can see that they intersect at this point here, which is the point negative 2, positive 1. Again, we can check our answer if I put it in here. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. The opposite of negative 2 is a positive 2, and 2 minus 1 is still 1. So it's a common solution for both equations. 
Now the next one, the previous two were in slope intercept form. This one is in standard form. So if it's in standard form, we can find my x and y intercepts. My x intercept, remember, is where I cover up the y. And so I solve for x. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so my x intercept is 3. To find the y intercept, you do the same. You cover up your x. Divide both sides by 4. Here is where I get 1.5. So that means my slope is I'm going down one and a half units to the right three. So if I want to come up with some other points, I go down one and a half to the right three, or go up one and a half and to the left three. Go up one and a half and to the left three. Now let's connect these. Now let's do my other one. My other one has a y intercept of, I'm sorry, x intercept of negative one and a y-intercept of negative 1. So that means these are going to be my points of intersection. And again, my points here aren't real accurate because um, my red line, if you notice, is actually up a little higher than it should be. There, maybe this is a better idea. So now we can see that our graph intersects at this point negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, we should always check to make sure our answer is accurate. If I put negative 5 in here, times negative 10, or, ne times negative, or 2 times negative 5 is a negative 10, 4 times 4 is 16, add those, you get 6. Put negative 5 in here, put 4 in here, negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So it works. Now, for this next one, let's change it up a little bit. So change uh, the two equations from what I had here originally. And um, so we're going to graph the, these two. So I'm going to start out by graphing my x-intercept. Again, my x-intercept is where I cover up the y. So my x-intercept here is 4. My y-intercept, oops, that was a 2y. Um, yeah, 2y. My y-intercept, if I cover up the x, is going to be 2. So what's happening here is I'm going down 2 to the right 4, which is the same as going down 1 to the right 2. We're going up 1 to the left 2. And now my next one is going to be my x-intercept If I cover up my y is going to be a positive 4 so here they have the same x-intercept find my y-intercept I cover up the x negative 8 divided by negative 4 is a positive 2 if you notice oops, these are the same line so if we have a situation again we're trying to find the solution to these systems so if we have where we graph it and they're the same line that means that we have oops, we have infinite solutions here. That's a unique situation. Let's look at this next one. There's another unique situation that we're going to graph. So for this one, my y-intercept is 2. My slope is positive 1 half. So go up 1 to the right 2, up 1 to the right 2, and so on. Or down 1 to the left 2, down 1 to the left 2, down 1 to the left 2. So when I graph these, I get that line, and here my y-intercept is negative 3. My slope is 1 half, so I go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. We're down 1 to the left 2, down 1 to the left 2, and if you notice, these don't intersect. So that means my solution is that there is none. We don't write down 0 as our solution, we just say that there is no solution. Like the other one. So these are our two unique situations. If we have where we graph them and the lines are on top of each other, there's an infinite amount of points where they intersect at, so there's infinite solutions. Or if they don't intersect because they're parallel, that means that there is no solution. So hopefully you have an idea here of what you're looking for. Again, we're trying to find the point where they intersect at. So when you're doing your assignment, don't just graph these. If you do, you're only doing half the problem. You need to figure out where they intersect at and write down that solution. So good luck on that assignment.